guys, Jonelle here. So today we're going to go over the transition plan. So there are two pages and I will make a video for each page. Um, the first one that we're going to be going over is the IEP transition page one. Um, and just so you know that the ITP, as we refer to them, the individual transition plan, um, is actually a section of the IEP that outlines transition goals and services for students with disabilities to ensure that they're making progress towards independence once they're leaving high school and heading on to any post-secondary activity that they're looking to go into. Um, so IDEA actually requires transitions uh, for student transition plans for students that are going to be um, at least 16 years old. So we start them for students at the age of at least 15 and a half. They need to have a transition plan in place by the time they are 16. So once your student turns about 15, you may want to start to look at completing the following two transition pages um, just so that we aren't um, dinged when it goes to um, get checked by CalPADS, but just to ensure that we have the transition plans ready and available for the students, um, just so that they're ready to go into whatever they're going to do post-secondary, all right? For students with more significant or severe disabilities, you can use this as a guide, but your transition plans will look a little bit different than this specifically, okay? So the first thing that we're looking at are, is the student invited? And you want to check yes, because by the time they're doing transition plans at 15 and a half, 16 years old, the student should already be attending their IEPs. Um, the next question, if appropriate and agreed upon, were the agencies invited? This can either be um, agencies such as the Regional Center, um, California Children's Services, etc. So if um, they are invited to that IEP, you can mark yes. If um, not, uh, you can either check NA, but if they are working with a program or other agencies, you want to make sure that they are invited, okay? So either yes or not applicable if they don't have any agencies that they are currently working with. Um, describe how the student participated in the process. So there's, they're present at the meeting. They had an interview prior to the meeting. They completed interest inventories or they completed questionnaires. So this is something that you really want to look at because you're going to be gathering information to see what the student is going to want to do post high school. Um, you'll need to select at least two of the following four choices, but yes, you can check all four of them that the student is attending. You've talked to them. They've completed assessments with you, which I'll get into further, um, but you're going to want to make sure to check off the appropriate boxes for them. And then it says age appropriate transition assessments slash instruments were used. And you want to mark yes, because everything that you're providing to the student in terms of assessments, interest inventories, questionnaires, um, should all be age appropriate for your students. Okay. So in this area, describe the results of the assessment you need to make sure that this is completed. You cannot leave this blank. And this is where you're going to give us information about um, how did the student do? Did they, were they able to complete the interview and the assessments and the inventories and the questionnaires? And what did you find from that? Um, so I did also provide, there's a multitude of resources, transition assessments, questionnaires, inventory available at this uh, URL. It's just a shortened URL and there are a few different uh, California Career Zone interest inventories, the RIASEC test, um, ONET. Those are all examples of assessments that you can use. So if you go ahead and visit that link and I'll also put it at the bottom of the video, um, for those of you who are within Fremont Unified, you can access that through our, through our drive. Um, but Please look at those if you have um, questions about what types of assessments you can go ahead and provide for the student. So for this video, we have Sarah Brown and an example for this section is Sarah recently took the RIASEC test in class and scored high in the areas of realistic and investigative. People that score high in the area of realistic are often good at mechanical or athletic jobs. College majors in this area would include agriculture, 
health assistant, computers, construction, mechanic, and engineering. And people who scored high in the area of investigative like to watch, learn, analyze, and solve problems. Good college majors in this area would include marine biology, chemistry, zoology, medicine, surgery, consumer economics, and psychology. When she completed the questionnaire, it expressed her interest in working with her hands and enjoying technology. She does enjoy taking electronics apart and putting them back together again. So this gives us kind of a well-rounded view of what was provided based off of interviews and questionnaires and the Ryasek test. Um, obviously, if you have more information on the student, you can definitely add it in there, okay? As you scroll a little lower, there's a student's post-secondary goal for training or education. As you can see, this section is required, so make sure that this is completed. Um, it says, upon completion of school, I will. So this is when you're talking to the students themselves. You're going to want to make sure that you're describing what the student wants to do to further their education and or training after high school. Uh, using this information from your interview and any of the transition assessments that you had given, just be able to provide a description of what they want to do. Um, for students that are receiving a certificate of completion and continuing on to our adult programs, you can state that attending FUSD young adult or young independent programs. Um, and for this, for our student, Sarah, it's upon completion of, of school, I will enroll in a training school for computer repair. So this is what she wants to do. Um, and below that, you're going to see linked to an annual goal. And in this, you're going to want to make sure that you create a goal for the student in the actual goal pages. And then below, you're going to list the goal number that's needed to support that. So don't forget that when you're creating the goal in the goal pages, that you're also marking down the box that says secondary transition. Okay. So that we know that that goal is also related back to the transition plan. Um, persons and the agency is responsible. In this section, you just want to make sure that you're listing down who is here to help um, provide this information to the student. How will they be able to um, access this? Who's going to help them? Okay. So transition service code as appropriate. What you're going to be marking is there is a drop down menu, but specifically for training and education, you're going to want to uh, mark 820 college awareness. Once you put this inside the transition plan in this section, this will auto populate a panel under the direct services on the service page. So you're going to want to go back to the service page and make sure that you're adding in the service minutes and the additional information that's asked of you on the service panel for college awareness. Okay. And related services as appropriate, we're going to be marking 330, which is a specialized academic instruction. This section would apply to any provider who is supporting specialized academic instruction. Okay. Activities to support post-secondary goal. So activities to support the post-secondary goal is where you're going to want to list any and all activities that you do in your program to support post-secondary training or education, uh, such as having special guests, uh, discussing school training programs, visiting the ROP, the college and career center. So for Sarah Brown, she is going to research job qualifications, have educate or understand what the educational requirements are, what are the required trainings for a career in computer repair, going to the library to conduct research on internet, completing applications, writing a resume, joining in a mock interview, and looking for schools that support computer technology and repair. And if you scroll down lower, community experiences as appropriate. This is where you're going to want to list any and all experiences that they have amongst the community. So things such as visiting their community colleges, 
um, visiting the, the ROP Center, Regional Occupational Program, and what other community outings do they have access to? So for Sarah Brown, she's going to actually visit the ROP Center and investigate and identify two schools or community colleges which provide training and computer repair. And she's also going to interview a repair computer repair technician. Our next section is about employment. And again, this section is also required. So again, in this section, what you're going to be doing is discussing um, and describing what the student wants to do as their career. So this information is going to be gathered again from your interviews, your transition assessments, um, any interest inventories, and you're going to explain what it is that they want to do in terms of a career for themselves. And for this student, Sarah Brown, she's going to, upon completion of school, I will work in a computer repair shop or a business where computers are being repaired. Okay, so um, as we scroll down, you're going to see also another link to an annual goal. This is important that only one of the trans transition goals is required. So the same goal number can be linked to both the educational training and the career training. So you only have to have one transition goal in the on the goals pages, um, but make sure that you're linking the appropriate goal number from that your goals here. Um, you don't have to have a goal for each area, but if you'd like to, you can create that, but you're only required to have at least one transitional goal in there, okay? Same thing again, persons and agencies responsible who's providing the supports and the transition code as appropriate for this, um, the goal in employment would be 840 and career awareness. Again, once you plug that in here, it auto populates on the service page. You need to go back to the service page and make sure that you're filling in the rest of that panel appropriately uh, based off of the information that you guys as a team are gathering, okay? Activities to support the post-secondary goal. Here's where you're gonna wanna list any activities that you do within your program uh, that are going to help the student obtain employment. So things such as discussing uh, their careers, visiting the ROP, visiting the career center. So for Sarah, she can maintain satisfactory attendance and punctuality at school, complete and turn in assignments, participate in transition planning and skill building in, the, in her resource class, seek out businesses and wages, visit ROP, the College and Career Center, and attend presentations from guest speakers on campus. So community experiences as appropriate. Again, anything that they have access to within their community then you can add them in here. Community uh, experiences for Sarah Brown are currently, she has a job as an after-school athletic coach. Uh, she's going to seek internship or part-time job in a repair facility or a related company. She can talk to and interview people who are in careers of computer repair and visit a computer repair shop and build connections. Um, as we scroll down, our third area that we're looking at, part of the transition plan, is independent living. And as you can see, this is as appropriate. So it is not required for all students. Um, you'll describe what the student wants to do for their living situation after high school. For example, living at home with parents, renting a room, living with friends. Um, this is required for those students who are on a certificate of completion track but it is not necessary for students that are graduating with a diploma. So please keep that in mind. Um, so for Sarah Brown, we have her that she's going to continue to live with her parents while she's attending school. And again, same thing goes for the goal um, and the person slash agency responsible. You're going to keep that in mind that you only need to have one goal, but if you do want to have multiple goals, you can. Just make sure that you're marking secondary transition. And the transition code for this is 890, Other Transition Services. Again, it will auto-populate on the service page, so make sure that you're going back to the service page to refill that in. And then you have the related services as appropriate. The sections for uh, would apply to any provider that's supporting the student um, through specialized academic instruction. Okay. 
Activities to support post-secondary goal. So what kind of activities do you do within your program to help with independent living? Um, they could have things such as studying for a driver's test, learning to balance a checkbook, determining costs to live independently, planning a menu, cooking for the family, washing their and folding their own clothes, uh, participating in household chores, um, maybe watching their parents pay bills so they learn how to do that as well, balancing a checkbook. So these are things that we would want to start teaching the kids so that they can learn to be as independent as possible once they leave high school. Okay, same thing with community experiences. Uh, what are some things that they could do um, within the community to be able to access? And so we have open a bank account, work with a family to balance a checkbook and uh, read credit card statements and bills, take a driver's test, learn to ride public transit, and actually looking at apartments for costs. So these are all things that we may not think that we should be teaching the students on a normal basis, but these are all things that we really need to make sure that we're spending time teaching the kids how to do these so that they can be as independent as possible once they leave high school. All right, so I will be doing the page two in another video. Thank you.